is up and welcome back to my channel. I hope you all had a lovely Easter weekend and bank holiday. I hope you spent it wisely. I spent it writing my coursework. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just- So it's currently exam period. Up in university world. Everyone's on their Easter break, revising for their exams in May. And um, so am I. So it's not a great time for anyone. And I am terrified. <laughs> We're always stressed. However, now I've finished first year, I can have a look at the whole year worth of my lecture notes. And let me tell you, they've proved pretty helpful now in exam season. I've taken away a lot of the stress that I would have had. I mean, I already am quite stressed anyway, but. I'm less stressed because of the way that I've written my lecture notes. This is my how to take the best lecture notes ever. So before you even think about going into that exam hall, exam, exam? So before you even think about going to that lecture theatre, you want to have a look at what your lecturers have put online, material-wise, as well as your seminar tutors. So the night before, or half an hour before your lecture starts, have a quick look at the PowerPoint slides and sort of format your notes. And by that I mean you want to put in titles, you want to put in any basic points, you want to put in any, you want to copy and paste any long, lengthy quotes that you would spend most of the time writing about when he's actually explaining the quote for you. This saves you so much time in the lecture and you can actually listen to what the lecturer is saying instead of just copying down what's on the whiteboard the whole time. If you wanted to just copy down the slides then you might as well just stay at home. I don't know if I should be giving you this advice but to be honest I think every student needs this. Just before you go into a lecture if you are tired, if you're fatigued, if you are hungover you need to grab a coffee or some food or some sweets or anything that will keep you going for that lecture. If you don't, you are not going to pay attention during that lecture. You will probably fall asleep and miss everything they've said. And then what's the point of getting up for that 9am if you've not even paid attention? So yeah, grab a coffee, grab an energy drink, grab a Red Bull, get into the lecture hall. We're currently in a lecture for studying lit. It's on JM. How do you pronounce his first name? Jay Now, I don't know about any other course, but at least for English literature, I know that we get given so much extra reading. It's like a mammoth list of extra reading. Does anyone get it all done? No. Done? A huge So now you're out of the lecture hall, you've been given a list of extra reading and there are about 20 titles on that extra reading list. You do not need to read every single title that is on that list, trust me. I think the reason they give you so much reading is because they want you to get sort of a well-rounded knowledge of not only the period but also the text and the text that were written at the same time as the text that you're reading or whatever. Not all of it is necessary for the exam and not all of it is going to necessarily help you achieve a better mark. So therefore, the best way to know which titles will benefit you the most, you have to look through, first of all, the title of every single text. So a way you could sort of weed them out is you could find a name of a theme, so sort of like romance or love. Once you have a text that has one of those themes in the title, you can go into that text, have a look at it, and then look at the chapter titles. Chapter titles are so important. If you look at the chapter titles, it can save you so much time when reading. Once you found those chapters, highlight the very key nuggets the very key bits of information that either you find most interesting or that will benefit you the most during the exam. Now your lecture's finished, you've put in all your extra reading, you've got a fully formatted, beautiful set of notes, now it's time to print them out and organise them accordingly by date. Try to avoid putting any colour on your notes because you can use highlighting and sort of annotation as revision later on if that's how you prefer to do your revision. I like to do it just because I think it makes them look prettier but that's just me. <laughs> I highlight titles in pink, key information in green and key quotes in blue. 
Right, so now you've got all of your lectures for the whole year, you're at the same stage as me, and it's now time to condense your revision notes into the very purest form, the very skeletal bits of information that they have. So you could do this by putting them on flashcards, or doing it on Microsoft Word, or making posters, or making mind maps, whatever, whatever suits you best. I'm going to do a whole other video about how to convert your lecture notes into revision notes. That'll be a whole other video that is coming soon. So there you go! There you have it, my method of taking the best first class lecture notes. The ones that will get you results, honey. If you like this video, then please give it a like. If you want to see what I get up to and to have the most up-to-date information, my Instagram and Twitter is at LME Horton. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you want to get notifications every time I upload a new video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!